Welcome to the 130th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. We haven't been around for a little while, but we are back. And we took a little adventure to Stratford, Ontario. And we went to the Songbird Yarn and Fibers. And the store is called The Nest. And we're excited to share that little adventure with you and some of our projects. And Colleen's been busy with her knitting. But before we get to all of that, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. Now, spring has sprung. It started to get warmer. You've been able to get out into shorts. the garage. garage. You've actually been in shorts. Yes. I have not. These lily white legs are not ready for <laughs> shorts, I can tell you that. Um, so we're wearing something that is a little bit less around the neck. And so what we're wearing are the um, bracelets, and that's called Film by Laura Nelkin. Now, May, I, I bought, the first one was I bought the kit. And with the kit, you get a pro, uh, pattern code. And so once I had that, and I knew I had beads at home, then I was able to make one for myself. Obviously it's in purple. Look at the colors, they're just the colors we like. <laughs> um, and then I could just use some of the beads that I already had. This, if you have not ever done knitting with beads, this is a great pattern. It doesn't take a long time. You get to use two different sizes of beads and there's two different ways that you put them on. And so this would be a great pattern to do. Am I correct in that you've done a video on how to knit with beads? I have. That, I have. That would be super helpful if exactly. you want to get started, I think. And I think I, if I am smart enough today, I <laughs> should be able to link that video. If you can, yeah. Well, below. if we can figure that out, we'll do that. Okay, sounds good. So that's what we're wearing, and next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object. And you'll notice a lot of these objects are things for winter, and it's not winter, <laughs> but it's trying to think about uh, craft, show, fairs craft fair yes. and those kind of things. So the first one is called a chunky cabled hat by Destiny Meyer. And oh my gosh, I, I love this hat. hat. And I love this hat too. So I make a nice big pom pom for the top, put the tag on it. And now I did do some adjusting on this. I found the first one that I did, the ribbing wasn't quite as snug as I wanted it. So I did some decreasing of stitches for the ribbing and then increase it because the cable suck it in as well. And how did you attach the hat with a button? Yeah, the pom-pom is attached with a button. That's my way to go. So that, that makes the pom-pom sit, sit up. Sit up nice and straight. Exactly. And it doesn't get too tags. floppy. I know. I really, really like And this. we get these tags from... Uh, uh, Brick Bubble. Brick Bubble online. Mm -hmm. Online. And exactly. they've been great, haven't they? Uh, they are. And they are washable, which is good to know, too. That's lovely. I love that. Yeah, me too. I think those would be a big seller. I'm hoping so. They're nice. It's a nice... Um, chunky kind of knit mm -hmm. so it doesn't take a whole lot of time but I and I love the cables this cable actually matches some of the other things that you'll see my next finished object is called the sock head cowl and that's by Kelly McClure and basically it's one skein of fingering weight yarn oh my gosh. it's so soft oh my gosh um, and basically um, you knit the ribbing up to a certain certain number of rows then you kind of weigh your yarn so you remember to leave that much yarn for the last part of the ribbing as well now this yarn is so is it the same um this way and that way so it doesn't matter which way you put it on um well one's a cast on and one's a bind off but it is the same way right yeah exactly so um i had made one for may and she loved to wear it well, actually, mm -hmm. I was wearing it, and then she said, oh, that would be really good. And so then I thought, well, I'll make myself one. And so this is such beautiful yarn. I don't think I've ever felt such soft yarn. So this is from A Wanderer and Her Wool, and this is Adventure Sock. So it's 75% merino, superwash merino, 15% cashmere. 15%. I was going to say, is there cashmere on this? Because exactly. really, when I did that, I thought exactly. this got exactly. And then there's also 10% silk. So nice. that's why it's so oh, it's nice. Beautiful yarn. Is it nice yarn to work with? Oh, I just kept thinking, okay, where is she going next? Where can I find her? Because that is some of the nicest yarn I've ever had. So I would recommend if you ever see, I know there's going to be some trunk shows that she's doing. If you ever see her, it's called a Wanderer and Her Wool. And if you ever see, there is a wandererandherwool.com. You can order things online. Um, think about it because that yarn, that's a sock base. It's brilliant. All right. So that was for me. And then the weather changed and I haven't worn it yet. So but <laughs> next year, next year, I'm going to tuck it away safely and I'll have. So that's that. Now, my next uh, finished object is called a ribbed headband with a twist. 
And this is by Athena Van Den Doel. So there's that. Now, this time I used, um, I don't think I mentioned the yarn the last time. So the hat is um, Charisma Acrylic loops and threads got it at Michael's now this is the plain yarn so that you get 109 yards on that skein okay now if you get the one that's tweedy so here is the um, ribbed headband with a twist then it is 93 yards that you get it's the same price um, it's the same weight but um, no it's not it's 85 grams so you get a little bit less um, but that knits up nicely and I'm using um, a smaller needle and that's allowing it to be nice so it'll be nice and dense over your ears I think just to keep them warm. Nice. That's really yeah. nice too. So I like that too. Yeah. So we thought that might be good to sell for mm -hmm. the booth I as well. I think that would be a seller. All right back some more some booth. Now you've seen these before. This is the Christine Button Cowl by Cozy Up Knits. These are a big seller. Exactly and I am using the Charisma Acrylic. I love it. It's very soft. So I have one that's plain and one that's Tweety. 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 Nice. <laughs> Tweety Bird. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, and they're beautiful and I'm going to start getting sorted out. So I've made a couple of them, put the buttons on. I really nice. like these buttons. I, like, I was just going to say I like the buttons. I know. I kind of have to go from fabric land to fabric land to get the buttons. Those are nice. They're nice to put over your head. Wow, like you've that. been so busy. I have. I don't know when you've okay. got time to do all this. Then <laughs> we have wonderful viewers. Um, and somebody sent a message and said, there is a bandana cowl and it's the Riverlands bandana cowl by Melissa Mayhe. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. And it's really nice. I like this. And so I found some yarn and this is ring spun acrylic blend. So it's a little bit thicker. Um, and it's also by Loops and Threads. So it's acrylic. When I'm making things for the booth, acrylic tends to work, work well. well because people can wash it and right. take care of it. So what I did was, this is the first color that I found. And basically, it's like a neck warmer. It's a little dicky kind of thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It depends on how old you are, whether you remember what a dicky right. is. But this just goes over yeah. your head. So you could wear it underneath a shirt or whatever. Exactly, and it'll right. go underneath your coat. It's right. not going to... Fill right. in all that stuff. And you don't want to wear a big scarf. Sometimes exactly. your scarf, I find scarves really in your face. They dangle yeah. and they yeah. get caught. Exactly. This is perfect. Keeps your exactly. neck warm without exactly. all the bulk. Exactly. So this is kind of a, it's not Tweety. I don't know what they call it, but anyway, yeah, it's, it's a nice. mixture. It's really um, nice. And then this, this is plain. the other color that we got. That's nice blue. too. Yeah. Very nice. Now, also one great. ball of this, so it is 163 yards. Um, I'm able to make three of those out of one wow. ball of yarn. So the balls of yarn's a little bit more expensive because it's a little bit bigger ball, but it's great. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really happy how those have, right. <laughs> have turned yeah, out. Yeah, and how are they to knit up? Like, it looks like it'd be a quick knit. I'm not sure. Um, it is a quick knit. It's a little tricky because you've got really thick needles and you're using a really short round piece because it's basically, it's like just to go over your neck. Right. Um, so it you need to have it like an eight inch needle and so it's a little tricky on the hands but it nice. works once you get it down so that you're working it flat then it's really good very nice so that's that oh my goodness you're getting wow you're, I'm we're piling up, piling we up. Don't see her. all right what comes next in my list okay the next thing is um i finished my embroidery so it's a cherished embroidery that i got from amazon so now, I was going to ask me about this, and I didn't get a chance, so we're going to talk to her right now. Um, so, I have, I what I did was I put the fabric on the back. It's felt, so I bought a piece of felt like this. Obviously, it was brown. Um, and then I cut it, made sure it was okay. I debated on whether or not to use... Um, the hot glue gun decided no, I needed it to help. So then I got some high tack glue, and this is by Unique Creative. And May's trying to figure out what the <laughs> ribbon's doing, and I'm going to explain that. Okay, so if you turn it around, and I really you like did, the felt. You did a really great job. Look how neat, and that's what you, you do when you do oh, crafts. You. You're so pristine, and you do yep. such great finishing. Thanks. You'd be like if you were a carpenter, you'd be the finishing carpenter because <laughs> it'd probably you, take me forever. <laughs> <laughs> your finishing product's always right. like perfect. So I was debating on ribbon. So all I did was cut a piece of ribbon and put it on. But it, obviously, I'm going to take this off. Because it's it, a little long. Right? It's long. I was going to cut it. But I had, didn't get a chance to talk to me about it. So that's what it looks like without. 
And so the debate is, we'll, we'll try it both ways. It's just going to be something to hang up. I think so. the ribbon was cute if it was just yeah. a little shorter. Oh, yeah. All I have to do is cut the... Yeah. But I didn't get time. Yeah. There we go. Well, that's great that that's all finished up. That's I lovely. Know. I really like that. I'm just going to hang it on a little yeah. nail somewhere in the house. And nice. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed embroidery. Okay. We still keep going. Whew. There's still more projects. This is because we haven't been on, uh, we haven't done a podcast for a right. while. We apologize yeah. for that. We did um, have a lot of fun eating all that food, though. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> that last one. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was. All we right. haven't really recovered from that, have we? No. 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 I was cleaning out the pantry and thinking, oh my gosh, there's still some of that left, <laughs> which I've been eating for sure. All right. So now I'm going to, we're going to take a look at the Bombini cowls. And that's by K.F. Jones. And the last one I was working on was this one. So it's dark at the neck. That's the one I was working on. I like on. the colors of this one. I know. And so this is what it looks like when it's reversed. Nice. So I bought a skein each, and that is a Barocco Vintage DK. And from two skeins, I was able to make three. And there's probably enough, I can't remember which color, of the one color that mm. I could maybe use it to make another one. Are these also acrylic? You can throw these in the wash. Also. Um, this is acrylic and wool. Okay, Whoa. so it's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 80% nylon. It says machine wash inside out in cold water, gentle cycle. Lay flat to dry. Right. But lay flat to dry is not a big yeah. deal. Well, they're still soft for having wool in them. I they're know, very soft. I know. So nice. They're very and, nice. And that, I really like the Barocco Vintage mm -hmm. DK. That's, it's up really that's well. nice. Mm -hmm. So, still Bombini, still KF Jones, and then May is the navy and white. So, what I was using oh, is Barocco this. Comfort DK, and this doesn't have any wool in it. So, this is 50% super fine nylon and 50% super fine acrylic, and it is lovely. There we go. So I made two. Now, I had um, uh, two skeins of the navy and one skein of the white. And what I have left right now is enough white to do this first part. And amazingly enough, I bought the two skeins of navy from the same store, but probably two months apart. And it's the same dialogue. Oh, wow. So what I'm going to be these able so to soft. do, I know, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to make another one of these. Mm hmm so if you're you, getting quite the inventory i must I'm say i'm working on it i have yeah. to get it organized that's right now is what i have to do now oh my goodness <laughs> we just keep going so may sunscott likes the toronto maple leaves so what i was doing was making him some socks you saw it as a work in progress i finished them they're actually for his birthday for next february but we knew the leafs were going to be in the playoffs and we knew scott had started playing hockey and so we wanted him to enjoy and the Toronto Maple Leafs are in the playoffs and they won against Boston last night so we're very happy it's tied one because we we are kind of Toronto Maple Leaf fans too there we are so um we gave them to Scott and I forgot to take a picture of them <laughs> but I know May can help me out with that so that's the first thing then I knew that May also likes socks and she likes shorty socks now the yarn that I used is polka dot creek it's self-striping socks. It actually is called Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's that. And that's what the yarn is called, Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah. It is her 75% oh. um, superwash merino and 25% uh, nylon. Nice. So, so I, my son's socks are exactly the same, mm -hmm. only they're taller. They're taller. So they're exactly the same right. socks, but and these I, are the Toronto Maple Leafs socks. Right. So and awesome. I know I wasn't sure if I'd have enough. So I bought a skein of opal. I can't believe how well. It's not exact, but it matched pretty well. Um, and so what I'm doing that is for heels, cuffs, and toes. Because of that, I needed to work on the pattern differently. So the pattern that I used for both of the socks, Scott's and May's, was Katie Lou's sock pattern. Because that one fits everybody's feet nicely. But I changed the heel to the butterfly heel from the lattice topped socks by KF Jones. And the reason for that is I didn't want to interrupt the stripes. The stripes were so nicely done. So nicely done. Exactly. She does such a good job. Polka Dot Creek. Love the yarn. And definitely the Toronto Maple Leaf colors. And that's why the yarn's called Toronto Maple Leaf. Because exactly. it's, exact, it's that exact blue. That's right. Yeah, now, nice. next time there's a hockey game. 
I'm wearing the socks. Maybe because, better wearing socks. Yes. <laughs> we debated. <laughs> Toronto should win then. We'll hope so. Yeah. So that's that. Now, the table is piled. I know you can't see everything, but it's piled up. Now, we have, we did one um, craft show a week and a half ago, and we've got one this Saturday. And so we so, have been busy. That's why we haven't been touching base with you. That's we, we right. We kind of miss doing this. Exactly. Um, it's because we've, we've been busy with the craft show and getting prepared and all that work. That's and, right. Um, anyway, we're, we're back and we're happy. And what else have you been working on there? Well, I thought, what can I do? Because obviously all my knit stuff, as much as I'm working on it, isn't the time to be selling it. So I tried trying two different things. So the first thing is I'm making some, they're called baked potato zappers. Um, and you use wrap and zap batting. And, and we've made these before, we've yes. put them on before, but you've made a little bit more. Yes, so I'm gonna try and have eight or so for our show. And so the idea is you just tuck the potato in there. Well, first of all, you pierce it so it doesn't blow up. And then you put it in there, put that in the microwave, and, and then, works. yeah. And it works great, because we've done that. Exactly, and, uh, and it says, two minutes maximum and then just flip it two minutes flip it two minutes flip it until the potatoes i love that cooked. there's potatoes on the fabric i that's know cool. it's so that's so fun. cute and those are great all right those are so, nice little pouches too exactly you want a purse potato purse <laughs> <laughs> that's a sack of potatoes <laughs> anyway that's that now oh. the other thing that i did i went into our stash of crafty stuff and i made some bracelets these are lovely. So they're elastic bracelets. There's one metal bead on it. I hide the knot, which is good. And I've also glued the knot so it's not going to come undone. These are beautiful. And I've made them in three sizes. I've got a small right. wrist. May's got a medium-sized wrist. And we've made them one. Just one nice. I love that. That's gorgeous. Nice. Exactly. Very nice. So anyway, we have a bunch of those for the booth. And that's that. Wow. Okay, the table's full. I'm just telling you, the table's mm. full. Yes. But I'm having so much fun. I do. I am a crafty person, as are you, I my dear. I guess you are. Like, oh, crafts my gosh. Crafts and crafts and crafts. Yeah. All right. Your wow. turn. Wow. Finished objects? Finished objects. Finished objects. Yeah, it's been such a long time, I forgot. <laughs> exactly. So many finished um, objects. Uh, some of you may know I've been wor I got this teak table, and I've been working on that. Colleen and I drove um, all the way to Blenheim, which is about an hour and a half away, to pick up this table. Mm -hmm. um, got it for about $150, which was very reasonable, but it needed a lot of work. Yes. I've stripped it off, mm -hmm. been working at it, puttering away at it. Yes. Finally got it finished. Yes. Very happy about that. Um, happy with the finished product. It's beautiful. And, um, it's a really, really beautiful table. Definitely do it again. And I used some products. Um, I used some product strippers that I hadn't ever used before. Right. Were you happy with those? Excited. Yeah, they okay. worked out really well. Right. Um, I'm going to make a video and talk about those products. Oh, I think that's it's really important to see if you're going to strip something. Right. And also, I bought this. They talk about this hard wax. Okay. And it's a protective cover. You don't have to put polyurethane or that over it. Oh, excellent. Um, it's just a nice hard wax that you know saves it now the for a jar of this wax it's like this big and i would have it here to show you but there's a story mm -hmm. um so for a jar of this it's like 85 dollars which is quite steep quite but steep you but don't it, need a lot of it you, right you put it on very sparingly and so it's that beautiful jar would the last finish forever. is beautiful and the finish is awesome and it's odie's oil you've probably heard of it because it's one of the very popular oils out mm -hmm. there hard oils anyway to make a long story short i um had this jar of 85 it was like gold to me mm -hmm. and what do i do i drop the well the table actually collapsed <laughs> that i was working oh, on my goodness. and the jar was on there and the jar smashed i was able to salvage and save some of the yep. oil um but not all of and it. all i heard from the <laughs> garage door was colleen i made a mason jar I'm like, what the heck why do you need a mason jar but i i knew where there was some i grabbed right. one and brought a it. jar and you saved the day <laughs> not to say that there wasn't a whole bunch of this oil all over the floor anyway you did a um, good job scooping i feel it up, bad huh? that i don't have the jar to show you but that's the story why i don't have that but mm -hmm. i do have the, some finished pictures of the table oh, and i'll show beautiful. you that and we were quite happy with the end product exactly. and i would definitely recommend um if i can do it i think anybody can do it that's you know how I feel like because mm -hmm. you take on a project like that you think oh I could never strip and all that the stripper was easy you strip it off you sand it as long as you've got some time and some patience right and then you just put this wax on it and wow. voila you've got a beautiful table for $150 fantastic like, yeah it definitely really do it nice. again I can't wait to another project like oh, I'm so excited yeah maybe sounds a coffee good. table or a dresser or something oh that sounds great yeah. 
so that was my finished object working on that working on the booth I'm trying to um, work on the booth to get it a little bit more creative, a little okay. bit less crowded. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with some ideas. Right. Um, so, um, but both of us have been very busy. That's for sure. Yes. All right. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress, um, actually my first two works in progress, are something that you saw in finished objects, but I just didn't get them finished. So one of them... I'm going to show you is the Christine button cowl again and the other one is another one of the chunky cabled hat but the good thing is you're going to be able to see what it looks like when it's not all together so this I use the charisma acrylic and I use the one that has the tweed in it so this is where I am whoa so when you're making that cowl this is what it looks like so it's one big long, like Cozy Up Designs, one big long rectangle and then you just cross it over. Now, you're supposed to cross right over left. You can cross left over right as long as the one part, and it says in the pattern, it's a paid for pattern, um, which part is supposed to cross over. So I have to always try and remember which one to do. Every once in a while I forget. Mm -hmm. But these cables are very similar to the cables on the hat. So let me just get a hat. All right, so if you take a look, can you hold oh, that up for me? It? That's okay. Like this? Yeah, that's perfect. So you can see the cables are very similar. This one's more of a, I think they call it a horseshoe cable, but they're similar enough that that would make a nice set. That's what I thought. There's a nice big pom-pom. So, so I just have to <laughs> get ready to put the tag on, put the pom-pom on, and grab a button to make sure I hold it steady. But I have to tell you, if you're making pom-poms, you need to make them really, really full because that makes a nice Yeah, pom -pom. that's a beautiful pom-pom. Yeah, thanks. My mom always says you make the best pom-poms. Yes, <laughs> I make... Mom's, my mom's knitting something. Um, she The other day she came out with this pom-pom that was like four or five strands. <laughs> and and uh, she was kind of like, Colleen, do you think you can help me? <laughs> so needless to say, we just said, do you have enough yarn for a new pom-pom? And that's what we did. <laughs> it was kind of cute. It was cute. But, uh, yeah, so she was quite happy with that's the other one great. you made. That's right. And nice. I, I do like the tweed yarn. I think it adds a little bit to yeah, it. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's just a shame that they charge you the same amount and it's less, right. less yardage. But yeah. it must be more expensive to manufacture. Right. So that's those two. Now, every once in a while, when you're doing a whole lot of project knitting, um, you want to do something different. So I am um, a member of the Lola's Choice Club with Lauren Alpin. So every two months you get a little something to knit. Um, what I like about it is that there's always new learning to do. And this one actually has an hour long video to make these socks. Wow. Um, and I, there's some things in here that I kind of thought, well, I've made enough pairs of socks. I'm not going to do that. But I did like how the socks finished out. So they are called the Larch Heads. I'll let you hold An that hour up. video on how to do something? Yes. Well, yes. it looks complex. Well, it is. And yet it's wonderful. Because, it is? Yeah, I'm going to explain why it's wonderful. So this, the yarn is spun right round, and it's tough sock. It's lovely yarn. So there was a contrast color. Now, they did say if your feet were bigger that you might have to do something different. I've got that much left, and I'm just about done. Now, the neat thing about this sock, and I have to be careful because it is paid for pattern. Sorry, I'm all last suit here. There we go. We're organized is that um, the way that the cuff's done, it's not ribbed. It's actually ribbed on the inside, so it does snug it oh, up to you. I see. Um, it's a little thicker. It yeah. is thicker. So it's double layer, which means it gives you padding on the back. When I buy shorty socks, that's what I like. Okay. Because it, it, it makes the socks not slip down. I have oh, okay. smaller feet, and it makes the socks not slip down. So these ones, I love how they're fitting. I love how they're fitting. Now, she does something fancy with how she does her heel flap and picks up stitches and I was starting to do it and I was thinking I've done this before I don't need to do the fancy um, but maybe if I would be making them again but the yarn's beautiful wow, that and they nice. knit up really quickly nice yeah I'm really really happy with that good so that is that really really happy does that yeah. sound good <laughs> <laughs> Colleen's really really happy it's all good we're That's all good it. then all right now I always try to do something a little different because my shoulder, my hands, I must admit, I was working on those socks a lot yesterday and I was doing something and I went, 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can't okay. do that, Colleen, because Colleen and I are in a pickleball tournament tomorrow, and we were a team. And um, as part of the team, you can't be wrecking your hand. No, no, no. I need a team player Needless here. Just to say, not doing much knitting today. <laughs> Don't okay. knit today. I need That's you right. tomorrow. I think you know what it is. I've been using all the bulky yarn, and then all of a sudden, I'm using really fine yarn. So you have to, right. and I'm using double point needles. So it just. And this pickleball, I know. You want to talk about No, go ahead. Forget, 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 forget the yarn. I want to talk about pickleball. <laughs> I'm so excited about this tournament tomorrow because it's a ladies' tournament, mm -hmm. and um, it goes for about four hours, mm -hmm. and then we go and we have a beautiful brunch, a great facility. Yeah. Um, it's just a lovely day. We've got into this before, yeah. and uh, we're just excited to, to be there and be able, exactly. at our vintage, to be able to play exactly. and just get some exercise and have fun, too. That's right. Okay. And be a little competitive. Tomorrow might be a little bit competitive. A little competitive? Colleen's not really the competitive kind of player. Well, yeah, you are competitive, but yes, you're, you're a good loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what she's saying exactly. <laughs> you, you, uh, you want to win, but you don't. If you win and you lose, it's okay. That's right. You know. Yeah. Like I'm obviously going to try and make the point. Right. You, you do try. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You're yeah. a great partner. Like you're an awesome okay. pickleball player. Um, Thank you. But um, you know, I'm. A, I, I would say a little bit more. Um, I get. Hurt. Uh, difficult on myself like I'm a little hard yes. on myself if yep. I miss the ball I figure I should be getting every shot which is just unrealistic <laughs> and um, but anyway we, we do well together we yeah, work well fun. as a team yep. and I think because we've played and we practice together so much right that we do well as a team and it makes a difference that's right yeah. I think so looking forward to it when we play with other players um, I'm expecting them to do what Colleen will do and they don't and then it's like it just doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad and our neighbors cutting the grass I don't know if you can hear that but Anyway, our neighbor's coming to us. That's okay. That's okay. That's All right. Life. My last work in progress is not knitting, so my hand will be safe. And that is a, it's a small cross stitch kit. It's called the Flower Truck. And it says, live simply. Now, part of the reason I got this was because it's May's favorite colors. And so there I am working on it. Now, this um, is a um, needle minder that I ordered from... Uh, Caterpillar Cross Stitch. They're in Britain. They do great work, by the way. Um, and this actually says Live Simply. This says Live Simply. Two different companies, but anyway, I was doing that. So I'm really happy how it's going. I like nice. the colors, and I think it's going to be pretty. When I, once I start doing all the that's flowers, nice. it's going to be very nice. Looks like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Nice. But it's different work, and that's what I like. I think when you're talking about working with your hands, you have to change. Change the weight of the yarn. Change the size of the needles. Change what you're doing so that it does make life a little bit easier. Um, let's talk about this. I'm just looking at this needle here. What yep. is the, all this? Is just, well, technically, it looks, it looks great. Technically, like, the needle is supposed to snap onto there, which oh. it does. But I find that when I put it on the back, the um, hoop itself protects it a little bit more. Oh yeah, so it's not so, you're right, because if something lands on it, it's, it's not, not going to fall off. That yep. makes total sense. But, the needle minder is there to hold on to the That's needle. a great idea. Yeah. Now you don't lose your needle. Right. Unless I stand on it on the rock, then no, we help. just won't do that. <laughs> okay, so that's great. those, I think, I think that's it. Oh. Those are my works in progress. And May, how about you? You haven't been doing too much with that. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much. And you finished that blanket, which was amazing. And I you think. saw that in a previous yeah. uh, podcast. It was good. The weather has gotten better, so I'm totally back in the garage and I'm in my zone. She is a happy camper. Um, yes, I was able to get up my... Uh, drill press and used it and I've been working on some projects. Colleen bought me this uh, scroll saw magazine. It comes out four times a year and in the magazine there's some projects I want to make. There's a little uh, car with a truck and um, a caravan oh, that so I want to make. Um, I've had to reduce the size and I'm going to work on how I can figure out what would I have to work with that. Mm -hmm. But I've been in the garage and I started working on these um, paddles I think she's going to go paddling <laughs> down the river. Can you see that? It's kind of long. I don't want to put it in your face. So <laughs> I've made this uh, paddle, and I'm hoping that I can maybe paint a design oh, on it'll here be beautiful. for decor for somebody's house. That's a and great idea. Those. But I really enjoy making those. I just cut them out with a scroll saw, and then I'm going to paint on there. So that's a kind of a work in progress. Oh, it looks a new great. Thing to do. My whole theme is to do um, nautical kind of a booth. Right, so we can right. sell our... Great Lake soap and that okay, kind of thing. Okay, yeah. kind of yeah. um, Also good. working on some children's puzzles. Oh, look at um, that. I haven't cut, quite cut this one out. I've just basically uh, drew the pattern onto the it wood. It looks really good. And then I have to take my circular blade on my scroll saw, and right. then I'm going to cut out the. Um, oh, okay. 
the jigsaw puzzle. And that'll be a puzzle. So I've got several Excellent. different types of those to make. Yeah. So I've got lots of projects on the go. Looking forward to getting into the garage and getting all those done and working on that and maybe doing some um, more resin work. And I mean, this is what happens. I've got so many things I want to work on. Right, exactly. Um, that there just doesn't seem to be enough time. I Do you know. find that when you're well, I know. projects? But then when we start getting ready to show what we've been doing in the podcast, it's like... Yeah, we oh have a goodness. lot of inventory. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you Like you did an entire table for Pete's sakes. Yeah, yeah it's true. really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So, yeah, I've been enjoying the, the working on the project. So the, that's what I'm working on, Colleen. And okay, so next we're going to talk about our adventure. Well, our adventure took us to Stratford, Ontario. We love Stratford, Ontario. It's just a lovely community. They mm -hmm. have the swans. They have that river. The they, theater. The theater. They have Stratford Theater. A lot of, like, uh, you know, theater people come that are exactly. well-known to That's there. Right. Um, lovely community. Not too crowded. The traffic's good. They've got great shopping, great mm -hmm. places to eat. And also, they have an amazing yarn store. And Colleen will yes, tell you all about do. that. <laughs> um, but before we went to the yarn store, Colleen, we right. did venture out because they have a Goodwill there, which I love to go to, which is yes. a secondhand store for those of you who don't live in the area. And uh, I usually go there to buy products for my little booth that I do. I buy uh, vintage kind of things and then I resell them. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had a cup and a saucer, and it was an Ansley cup and saucer, and I paid $5 for it. And uh, I sold it for $26. But they generally exactly. go for like fifty dollars. So exactly, you always price your things well. Yeah. If I get a good deal, I sell it for a good deal. Right. And so I love the Stratford uh, Goodwill because they have great products, and usually I do well there. But mm -hmm. uh, this trip, I only got one item, but I'll show you that in the souvenirs. And um, we had a fun day and a great lunch. And here we go. Colleen will talk about the yarn store that we like. All right. So we went to see Vicky Ryder at Songbird Yarn and Fibers. It's two forty graph. Ave in Stratford. I love her card. It's so pretty. So I love her yarn. I love her I, colors. I, I know. It's amazing. So when we went in, there were some other ladies working. So you and I had a little look around uh, and then we had a lovely chat with Vicki. And so um, she was talking, but we talked about things about yarn. So she said that still sock weight is her most popular. Um, she has kind of, she used to have a worsted weight and now she has a uh, um, a DK weight and she finds that selling mm -hmm. better. She has bulky weight, which you'll see in the souvenirs. Um, and she also sells some Chowgu needles and there are some, a few notions that she sells. Right. So in the space, the front part is where she sells her yarn and the back part is where she actually dyes the yarn. yarn yeah. So she does great work. She's got it really organized really, really well. And uh, she is lovely to chat with. Now, um, she loves birds and she loves yarn. And so what she's been able to do is combine the two. So when you buy yarn, um, not all yarn, but m most of her yarn is bird inspired. So she takes a, she gets a picture of a bird, uses the colors from that um, when she dyes the yarn. I love the whole concept. This is so I know, cool, it's so it? neat. Yeah. And the great part about it is that if you buy um, some of her bird inspired yarn, a skein of yarn, then she donates to two dollars to birds canada so by buying that's yarn great. you're helping the birds that was my that's, reasoning yeah. that's why i bought yarn <laughs> um but we were talking about with vicky we were talking about uh yarn shows and we were talking about knit city was she gonna go um and she's kind of a little bit like i find some of the big shows a little overwhelming, overwhelming. and so she likes to go to a smaller show in so ontario she, you'll yeah. find her around at the different little ones exactly. and where is she going recently she's going she's to gonna go to the fergus show which right. is the 25th of may Yes, 25th. Yeah. I'm so going to say like I know there. what I'm talking about. Look yes. for her there, yeah. Exactly. Because she does a great job. That was, that actually was where I bought your um, Blue Jay yarn that you didn't even know right. I bought. I oh, kind of went in, got it, put it in the bag, May didn't know, and then I was starting to make something and it was a work in progress on the podcast. I said, guess what? This is for you. <laughs> she said, when did you buy that yarn? That <laughs> now, uh, we should write that on our calendar because I, I love going to the Fergus show. It's if really, you haven't really been fun. there, it's yeah, great. it's really, so. really nice. It's, it's, um, it's all down the main street. They close off the main street. Then they have some animals and they have all kinds of yarn. If the weather's great, it's perfect. Exactly. It's a perfect so day. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed right. for that one. So we did have a lovely time with Vicki and we chatted about yarn and shows and all kinds of things. And we really appreciated 
for spending some time with us. So thank you, Vicki, very much. And if you're in Stratford and have a chance, um, pop into the nest. Um, she's right at the very end of mm -hmm. that. Um, it's kind of like a plaza. She's right. right at the very end. And Stratford itself is just a great place to visit. Like exactly. you can walk down by the waterfront. You can have lunch down there. That's right. Um, they've got the British store, of course. Oh, yes, they do. Um, they've got all kinds of really that's nice stores. Right. So yeah, exactly. very worth your while to go to Stratford. So that's our adventure. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. May, souvenirs for you? Sure. Like I said, Stratford Goodwill always get a, I usually have a cart full of stuff and you I bring do, it home. Yeah. And um, didn't happen this time, yeah. but I did bring home one object. Mm -hmm. And it's a little, and you know, I bring home kind of unique little yes, objects. Yes, you're very this good at This is a little thinking. tea set. It's like a little China tea set. It's beautiful. And um, as the price was on here, it's $4.99. Right. And when you go on to um, eBay, it's worth a lot more than that. Maybe oh, wow. $40 or wow, something like that. Wow, that's so amazing. I thought some little girl's going to enjoy yeah, that. Exactly. And I might put $20 on it, so I make a few dollars. And um, there we yeah. go. So That's it's good. a cute little tea set. I love it. It is. I yep. really, really like that. So that it's was so, it. Do you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Sorry, Mom, if you watch this. <laughs> I remember I had been over to a friend. I, I don't know how old I would have been. We won't even say. I was a kid. And I had been over to a friend's house, and she had a little china tea set, and I really, really liked it. So I asked for a china tea set from Santa, and I got a plastic tea set, which was lovely, <laughs> but in my head... I was going to be a little china tea set. <laughs> so anyway, four kids, you can only afford what you can afford, and I understand that. Um, and I did play with the tea set that I got, but in my head, what you bought is exactly what I would have so bought. So you were a little disappointed? Just a little bit. Yeah, this kind of but feels I was like the real McCoy. McCoy you it know? does, it just feels absolutely. Like a good little absolutely. tea set. Yeah. It's funny how something like that can bring back memories like that. It is. I in a certain sense, too. Exactly. You know, like That's if right. you go in somewhere and you smell, like the Isle of Erin yep. has a scent. Yeah. I don't know if it's the sheep's poop. <laughs> Because there's so much. Well, that's a scent. <laughs> but there is a, it's a beautiful, but it's a fresh grass, green. Uh, like it's, I can't mm. ex describe, but it definitely has a scent. Mm. And when we went to visit there when I was a kid, it was the same smell. Right. I don't know if it's seaweed, a mixture of all that. All that stuff. All the seaweed and the sheep's poop. And the <laughs> well, I know what she's getting next year for Christmas. I'm going to find her some sheep poop. <laughs> Anyway, it is so much fun. And the, and the sheep there, like, yarn lovers would love it, you know, because the sheep just wander there exactly. all over the place. Like that's right. Yep, you that's cross right. the road everywhere. It's, it's kind of a fun wow. place to be. And speaking of the Isle of Air, I just want to say um, my cousin lives there, my, my ancestry cousin that we found each other. Right. And she lives on the Isle of Air. So hi, hi Margaret, if you're watching. Uh, if not, I hope to see you soon. There we go. So, souvenirs for me. I had to buy a bottle of some yarn. And this is the Cerulean Warbler. And it says they're usually found high up in a tree canopy, but well worth the search. Um, and there's a picture there. But these are our colors. You love like these that. colors. I love it. So, this yarn and, looks a little fluffy. Like. Okay, so these are the ties that tie it so it doesn't get all messed up. Oh, okay. That's not really so, the yarn. Then. No, no, no. But anyway, because I made that those cowls, that kind of right, yeah, neck warmer. Nice, yeah. I thought I might be able to, if I may be able yeah. to squeeze two out of that. I'm that would hoping. Be great. Anyway, that's the plan. The nice thing that Vicky does is she gave me, and I'm assuming she gives everybody a little tag. It says "Handmade with Love" and "Songbird Yarn and Fibers." So you can attach that to what you knit. That's a cute really little. Cool. That's a cute little exactly. gift. Exactly. Eh? It's great. That's cute. Yeah. Exactly, and it's your color. So nice. That's it. hopefully I may attach it to that when yeah. I make one for me. That's nice. So those are my souvenirs and our souvenirs. Um, and we did have a great time we with did. Vicki in Stratford. So thank you so much. And thank you to you. Thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us the thumbs up. Ring comment that down bell. Below. Ring that, that bell. bell down below. Up there. That's right. <laughs> Subscribe. Uh, because we really do enjoy doing this for you. So until next time.